like that. So, for example, the North Pole receives sunlight for 24 hours during the winter when the top of the Earth, if you like, the north part of the Earth, is pointing toward the sun. So that's, in, in simple terms, the position of the Earth as it goes around the sun, an inclined axis and going around the sun in a circle. You can see the same thing on this diagram here. This, the Earth, with the tilted axis, and this, the summer situation, with rays from the sun illuminating the North Pole 24 hours a day. And the Earth, then, through the seasons, through fall and through winter, moves around the sun. In the winter situation, the North Pole is in darkness for 24 hours a day as the Earth rotates on its inclined axis. And then in the spring situation, back to summer. Now, if that were the simple picture, the simple rotation of the Earth around the sun, and that were constant, then everything would be easy. But it doesn't stay constant. The orientation of the Earth toward the Sun and the position of the Earth toward the Sun change. One of the major changes is an alteration in the orientation of the axis of the Earth, the axis around which the Earth rotates. We can see that in this diagram. The axis of the Earth, that is the south to north poles, presently points to the North Star. But just like a wobbling top, every 13,000 years the axis of the Earth changes and points an equal amount in the opposite direction. And this would be the North Star in 13,000 years time. And 13,000 years after that, the situation would be back to normal. So on the simple situation that we looked at first, with summer here in the Northern Hemisphere in June, in 13,000 years with the axis in the opposite direction, we'd have winter in June. Now, those, or that is, one major change in the orientation of the Earth. There's a second change which takes place, and that has to do also with the axis of rotation of the Earth, but has to do with the angle of the axis of rotation. The maximum angle is 24 and a half degrees from what would be a vertical north-south, and the minimum is 21 and a half degrees. The angle at present is tilted about 23 and a half degrees. And that change from a maximum to a minimum takes place about every 20,000 years. Now, the importance of those changes in position is that the summers need to be cold in order for the snow which fell during the winter not to melt and to have a chance to build up to form an ice sheet. And those two circumstances, plus another one, combine to produce the cold summers that we need for the advance of glaciers. That other change in position of the Earth is that the Earth doesn't, in fact, go around the sun in a perfect circle. The sun is not at the center of the orbit uh, of the Earth. There's a long axis at present of 94 and a half million miles, and that occurs during our summer. And there's a short axis of about 91 and a half million miles. So the Earth's orbit is eccentric, and it becomes even more eccentric than it is at present about every 92,000 years. And moreover, the long axis becomes the short axis of the eccentric orbit every 108,000 years. Now, that all sounds very complicated, and it's difficult to remember the figures and just what's going on. But the sum total that we want in order to produce a cool summer in the northern hemisphere, in order for the summer snow, or for the summer not to melt the winter snow, is we need the summer to be when the Earth is far from the sun. We need it the axis to have a small inclination toward 
the toward the sun and at that stage the summers will be cool and we'll have a chance to preserve the winter snow so one can calculate how often those circumstances are likely to occur and a mathematician called Milankovitch did exactly that and there seems to be some correspondence between the times when those favorable circumstances for preservation of snow during the summer in the northern hemisphere some coincidence to the actual observed advances of the ice during our last ice age now there's much disagreement about this it depends on dating of the advances it depends on calculations and so forth but there seems to be some agreement and we may in the position and the orientation of the earth vis-a-vis -vis the sun have some reason or some cause for major climatic changes the kinds of climatic changes we want to occur on the 10 or the 100,000 year scale but we have a problem with the long-term changes and in order to solve the problem with the long-term changes we have to look at the distribution of the oceans and the continents at the South Pole the continent of Antarctica which is glaciated lies in an interesting position it's right over the pole there is the outline of the continent of Antarctica covered by two miles of ice now Antarctica didn't become glaciated until about 16 million years ago and we can date the glaciation by an in very interesting fashion in fact by looking at the way in which the small shells of our little floating organism very very tiny shells which way they're coiled when the climate was cold the shells coiled in a left hand spiral when the climate was warm they coiled in a right hand spiral and by looking at the age of the sediments around the coast of Antarctica we can spot a considerable cooling down of the water about 16 million years ago and that we think uh, was the time of the start of the glaciation of Antarctica now why did it wait or why did it not occur before 16 million years ago well the last major event which affected Antarctica was the movement of away of Australia here is Australia now but about 50 million years ago this ocean that's in between didn't exist and it seems that the conditions for the glaciation of Antarctica only occurred after Australia had moved away from Antarctica and that gives us a clue as to the kind of position a landmass must be in in order to be glaciated it must be in a high latitude Antarctica is right at the South Pole it must be surrounded by water surrounded by water because it's from the water by means of um, <clears throat> the picking up of water from, from, from by the air and the snowfall on Antarctica the consequent snowfall from that open water that the snow comes and we have confirmation of the need for the landmass to be surrounded by open water if we look at the opposite pole of the earth if we look at the continent in the northern hemisphere which is presently glaciated that of Greenland which is here now around the coast of Greenland there are rocks quite clearly visible but it's just a small rim of rock and in the interior of Greenland just like in Antarctica there's a very thick pancake of ice also more than a mile thick the conditions under which Greenland has been glaciated are very similar to those of Antarctica Greenland is obviously also in a high latitude it's very far to the north